Hello, Bulls and Bears. It is Saturday, February 22nd. Hope everyone is well. Auto loans hit $1 trillion. Right, we all knew this was coming. Now, is this a disaster? Well, it depends on the point of view that you want to look at it from. If you're a bank, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You get repo bailout money, 0% interest, and we're not allowed to know who all of this repo money is going to. It's a secret. We're not allowed to know. Could it be Deutsche Bank? Could it be a subprime auto lender that have a lot of these late auto loans? Well, we don't know. Now, I don't mean to put this out there lightly. Obviously, if you're someone that's getting your car uh, repossessed, I shouldn't be playing clapping noises. <laughs> Maybe that would be more appropriate. Uh, but these banks, they are raking it in with these subprime loans, sometimes 20 25% and even higher. And again, they're getting ultra low to 0% interest money from the uh, Fed. And remember, if they're not getting it directly from the Fed, a lot of this is through intrabank lending. And uh, that's why you have the repo market blowing up right now and have the need for these uh, cash injections pretty much daily now. All right, so let's get into the numbers here. Outstanding auto loan balances just hit a new record and delinquencies are on the rise. No surprise. $66 billion of the $1.33 trillion in outstanding loans were over 90 days delinquent. So that is getting to getting your car repossessed zone right there. And just since the same quarter, comparing fourth quarter 2019 to fourth quarter 2018, we're up $57 billion. And it's a new record high, just like the stock market. New record highs. Of course, we've got a sell-off in the stock market the last few days. Guys, if you have your vehicle paid off, my advice, well, I don't want to give advice. What I do is I drive it as long as I can. If I have to do some maintenance, keep the oil changed... Um, that's what I'll do. I just hate being stuck in an auto loan. And can you imagine being in a subprime auto loan with the interest rates are 15 to 25%? On top of all the other expenses that we have now with the rising rents, the rising home prices, and everything that comes along with that, higher insurance, higher taxes, higher fees. And can you actually imagine if banks were restricted to only lending out money that they have in reserves with money that they have in deposits from depositors? You would see a lot lower costs across the entire economy including automobiles because loans they increase demand for the product and therefore they cause inflation because more people out bidding up the prices of these items and autos right they're bidding up the prices with money they don't have it's loans it's borrowed money in many cases it can't be paid back according to the uh, the data here uh, a lot of these people are going to be losing their cars and that's going to bleed over into the broader economy. People need their cars to get to work uh, for the most part. And some people say, oh, JJ, no, that's wrong because, you know, the banks, they're doing everybody a great service because people wouldn't be able to afford cars without these loans. You know, thank, thank goodness for these loans so people can get these cars. Well, no, think about it the other way. It's the loans that are causing the higher prices. Again, if you don't have all these people out there buying these cars with money they don't have with, with loans and subprime loans in many cases, the car dealers would have to come down on their prices because they would have no customers. All right, and this proves it right here. Look at this. Some 85% of new cars in the U.S. are financed with a loan. 85% of people have to get loans on a car. So you're going to cut out 8 out of 10 people being able to buy a car if you get rid of this loan uh, economy that we're in right now. So demand would go down, dealers would have to cut their prices. And then some people say, no, JJ, you know, lower prices, oh, that would be bad. That means the, the dealers, they wouldn't make as much money. The car manufacturers wouldn't make as much money. Well, think about it this way. They wouldn't have to pay their workers as much if everything became cheaper, right? So we see all this push for higher minimum wage, and we know that wages are not keeping up with inflation anyways. But if there's less inflation and the cost of living is lower, then that lowers the need for higher wages. So with inflation, inflation, inflation that's created by the banking system, the fractional reserve lending, then you're always going to have this push for higher wages, higher wages. And then that encourages companies to outsource to lower, to countries with lower wage costs 
And that's just one of the many reasons why we've seen manufacturing jobs obliterated and sent overseas here, especially in the last few decades. And imagine the people on a fixed income, or maybe you're on a fixed income, if you're on Social Security or um, some other fixed monthly income uh, situation, um, you don't have a way to get a higher wage. So you're going to have to go out maybe even 60, 70, 75 years old and get a second job or get uh, an income to supplement your Social Security because of these rising prices. It's pretty ridiculous. And again, this all goes back to the banking system, the fractional reserve lending system that we have. And again, imagine if banks had to only lend out money that they have in deposits. They would have to raise interest rates and give depositors a reason to deposit their money in the bank. Right? That by itself would cause more people to save and less people to go out and spend it. And that would also be a factor in having less inflation and everybody going out and bidding up home and auto prices and everything else. All right, so prices would be cheaper, people would have more money in savings, and that therefore would be less debt, less interest that people are paying on month to month because people are carrying less debt balances. The world would be a much better place. All right, unless you work for a bank. If you work for a bank, then it wouldn't be a better place. Uh, I myself work for a financial institution, and one of the reasons why I can't show my face, right? My employer would not like the contents of these videos. Now here's a clip that I paid for, speaking of the fractional reserve banking system, and it resurfaced recently, I think someone tweeted it out, I'm not sure if it was Peter Schiff, and whatever, it was retweeted like a thousand times. And this clip is a few years old, it's out of the European Parliament, but it's pretty uh, similar wherever you go in the US and other countries. Uh, modern civilization has this fractional reserve system with the fiat currency, uh, take a listen to this. And that is, it is my opinion that you do not really understand the concept of banking. All the banks are broke. Uh, Bank Santander, Deutsche Bank, Royal Bank of Scotland, they're all broke. And why are they broke? It isn't an act of God. It isn't some sort of tsunami. They're broke because we have a system called fractional reserve banking, which means that banks can lend money that they don't actually have. It's a criminal scandal and it's been going on for too long. To add to that problem, you have moral hazard, a very significant moral hazard from the political sphere. And most of the problem starts in politics and central banks, which are part of the same political system. We have counterfeiting, sometimes called quantitative easing, but counterfeiting by any other name. The artificial printing of money which if any ordinary person did, they'd go to prison for a very long time. Okay, you heard him say that right there about the interest rates. Interest rates are suppressed, which encourages the debt binge, which discourages people from saving their money in the bank because they're not getting anything in return. All right, sounds impossible, right? Bankers going to prison. Well, it's not impossible. It happened over in Iceland. Here's an older article. But it talks about the 36 bankers, uh, 96 years in jail total. The Icelandic judiciary has sentenced 36 bankers to a total of 96 years in prison. All of the criminal cases are linked to the notorious crash of the Icelandic banking system in 2008. 11 of those bankers, <clears throat> excuse me, 11 of those bankers who are former employees of Capping uh, were sentenced to 35 years in prison, while the other seven individuals from a different bank were sentenced to 25 years, right? So when you look at individual uh, sentences, these are very slap on the wrist type of sentences, right? 96 years total for 36 people. You're only talking about between three and four years for most of these individuals. People here in the U.S. caught with the wrong type of grass uh, in a bag can get more time than that in some states. Pretty sad. All right, everybody. Sorry for the rant. <laughs> we started off talking about car prices and got uh, deep into the fractional reserve system, but now, real quick here before we wrap this up, we do talk a lot about preparation for a possible economic downturn, and we know it could happen anytime. As soon as the stimulus, this uh, bank bailout, repo bailout stops, um, we're going to see some drastic changes. Economic bubbles always come to an end at some point. And a lot of people say, well, what can I do? I don't have you know much money to invest. Uh, I can't buy a off-grid property or some survival prepping location. But even if you don't have any money, any land, any assets, the best thing you can do is prepare yourself uh, mentally, uh, physically, right? Prepare your mind and body. 
because you are going to be your most valuable asset when it comes to surviving any economic turmoil or hardships with the economy. So one of the best things you could do is try to um, handle yourself, um, your relationship, uh, especially if you're in, a, you're in a toxic relationship with a lot of financial uh, arguments and things like that. Um, and what I've been listening to, I've been listening to a nice YouTube channel called Red Pill Alpha Solutions. And he's also um, a friend of the channel here. He leaves comments sometimes. He leaves comments down in uh, below these videos. Uh, so check it out, you know, if you're interested in that. Um, it's a very positive channel, and it's what I've been listening to a lot lately. So we'll put a link down in the description. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Keep riding that bull and preparing for the bear. Bye for now.